Good morning. On today, we don't have a regular service in the building. Um, what we do on Fifth Sundays is, as a church body, we go out and we serve the community. We give back to the community. We give back to people um, outside of the four walls. And so that's what we teach here at Open Altar. But I wanted to still continue to give you a message from our sermon series, which is called the Mount Sermon Series. And today, um, I just want to share with you a message from the Mount Sermon Series. And we're going to be reading uh, Matthew verses uh, chapter 6, verses 17 through 24. Verse 17 says, when you fast, don't let it be obvious, but instead wash your face and groom yourselves and realize that your father in the secret place is the one who is watching all that you do in secret and will continue to reward you. Verse 19 says, don't keep hoarding for yourselves earthly treasures that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rust, decays, and loses its value. Instead, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourselves that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. For your heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. The eyes of your spirit allows revelation light to enter into your being. If your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. But if your eyes are focused on money, the light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place. How profound will be the darkness within you if the light of truth cannot enter? Last verse, verse 24, it says, How could you worship two gods at the same time? You will have to hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot worship the true God while you are enslaved to the God, small g, of money. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and we thank you on today. Thank you for the word that you are going to impart into your people. We pray that they gain something from it, that it be sown into their spirit, and that it be life-changing. In Jesus' name, I pray. I want to talk to you from the title, Treasure Hunt, Storing Riches in Heaven and Not on Earth. Um, there is a game that is called the Treasure Hunt game, and it's where people use their cell phones to find eight small treasures, treasure chests hidden in and around the city, public landmarks, and, and there's clues that are printed and, and put on color slips of paper. And what these people do is they get these color slips of paper and with a bunch of identical copies of each, they stuff them into a treasure box that they have and a, a treasure chest at each location. And, and um, each clue um, gives them an intersection um, or a set of GPS coordinates. And it's done through their their cell phone, and, and at the end of finding the last treasure, the very last treasure, the winners, all they would look, win is points. That's the only thing that they win is points, nothing else. After running around all of the city, the only thing that they gain is points. So their time is spent. It says it takes about three hours to do this treasure, treasure hunt through the city. Well, in this passage that I'm talking about on today, Jesus is talking about treasuring what truly matters, what truly matters, and the impact of our heart's focus, what our heart is really focused on. And he's calling um, us to serve God over material wealth. He's asking us to serve him over material wealth. 
the things that we have, our houses, our, our cars, whatever your material wealth is, he is, uh, uh, through this uh, message and through this talking to the people on the Sermon on the Mount, he is saying, look, he says, serve me over the material wealth. And he's focusing on choosing heavenly treasures over earthly treasures. He's telling us to treasure the heavenly treasures rather earthly possessions, and he's drawing um, our heart's attention, the attention of our hearts. What's the, the orientation of our heart towards eternal values? So this is what Jesus is trying to teach us through um, the scriptures that I just read. And, and one, the first point that I want to talk to you about and uh, give a contrast about is about earthly um, versus heavenly treasures, uh, Matthew 6, uh, 19, or, or in Matthew 6, it says, look, it says, don't keep hoarding for yourselves earthly treasures that can be stolen by thieves, material wealth, eventually rust, decays, and loses its value. It's saying that the material wealth decays, rust, and loses its value. And so the difference between earthly treasures is that it can be stolen. It can be stolen. It can be taken away from you. If you have a car and you don't make your car payments, it's going to get repossessed. That's an earthly treasure. That's an earthly thing that we have. What is it that, uh, that you treasure here on earth? And not only that, it says that our earthly treasures eventually will rust and decay and it will lose its value. It loses its value. So um, think about um, what in your life that you have that you hold on to tightly. That is uh, uh, an earthly, that is an earthly value, an earthly treasure that you hold on to and you say, I'm not going to let it go. Um, I, I treasure this more than anything. It, it has more value to me. Um, but he says that heavenly treasures, heavenly treasures, he says don't hoard up, but heavenly treasures, it says that it cannot be stolen. It can't be taken away from you. Um, it will never rust or decay or lose its value. Whatever you do for the kingdom of God, it never rusts. It never goes away. It can't be stolen. What you store, the treasures that you store up in heaven um, through worship, through serving him, through love, it cannot be stolen from you. Um, I thought about the thing, the, the uh, example of a, a car. Um, a, a car is quoted that statistics say that new cars loses 10% of its value once you drive it off the lot, 10% of its value, the minute that you drive it off the lot, 10% is already lost. And, and uh, it says over after each year that you have it, it loses 15 to 20% of its value. So it just goes to show you that the things that we have on earth, it eventually loses its value. It eventually rusts. It eventually decays. And so heavenly treasures, what heavenly treasures mean, it says that it means loving one another. It, it means doing good like we're doing this Sunday, going out into the community and doing good, going out into the community and loving others. And not only that, heavenly treasures um, is revealing the truth and bringing Christ's light into the lost, those out there who don't know Christ. We live in a community where there are a lot of homeless people, and so um, they may not know Christ, or somebody in the grocery store may not know Christ, but heavenly treasures are those things that you go out and that you do and showing love. It may not even be saying anything, but it may be doing something for someone in love, not to bring attention to yourself, but to do it because I love them. Um, I, I want to do it because I want them to show the love. I want to show the love of God to them. Um, heavenly treasure also represents your spiritual 
riches and acts of faithfulness and obedience to God. Um, how obedient are you to God and, and God's word? Um, what do how faithful? Are you to God? How faithful you are you to the word of God? How faithful are you to the things that God has commanded us to do? It says how faithful. That's what heavenly treasures is. Treasure, heavenly treasures is being faithful to the things of God. And, and I want to ask you, um, do, we, do you spend more time watching TV? Sometimes uh, we can spend more time watching TV and scrolling through social media and scrolling through our, our phones and doing other various things that have no value, have no spiritual value, have no godly values. And so God is saying that he wants us to store up heavenly treasures treasures those things that i just mentioned are really earthly values those things are are things that will rust that will decay that can be stolen away from you think about it if you're scrolling through your phone and and you don't charge it up then it's going to go dead so therefore it has lost its usefulness uh to you and and so i i want to say where are you investing your life on on what things are you investing your your life on and and putting your investment in and and when we invest in heavenly things um those things that really don't matter to God or or matter to the kingdom of God um doesn't last but those things that we do towards the kingdom of God and to the faithfulness of God, it says it will not pass away or things, uh, it, it won't lose its value. And, and I think about it, things can be here today and gone tomorrow. So what are you investing your life in? Are you investing your life in things that will be here today and gone tomorrow? I often say that tomorrow is not promised to us. We can, we can leave here, work hard and do, and I'm not against that. I'm not against it at all. We should, we should be good stewards over what God has given us. But when it takes control over us, when we value it more than heavenly things, heavenly uh, uh, things that God has, has mandated us for, to do, then it eventually we can leave it all here. We can leave it here I, we can be here today and and God says I want to uh, call you home or uh, it, it is your time your expiration date so we don't live forever so so think about that number two what I wanted to say uh, look in this passage is Jesus is is questioning us about what's the condition of your heart What's the condition of your heart? Matthew 6, 21 says, For your heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. Jesus is highlighting in the scripture the deep connection between what we value and the very orientation of our life. There, when we value things, it, 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 it becomes a deep connection. So what is the connection between what you value. Jesus is saying, look, there's a connection that is made in what you value and the very orientation of your heart. Your, how is your heart aligned? What is, what is the alignment of your heart? Our heart must be aligned to the things of God and not to the things of this world. What things do you prioritize? Uh, uh, is your heart aligned to earthly treasures or is your heart aligned to heavenly treasures once again are the things of God is your time and your energy and your resources uh, devoted to uh, earthly treasures or is your time and your energy devoted to laying before God is your time and your energy devoted to getting into the word of God and, and seeing what God has to say and letting the word of God speak to your spirit? Is, is your time and your energy sometimes just sitting before God and listening and just being quiet? Is your time and energy, what are you spending your time and your energy on and your resources on? Um, what we 
uh, spend our resources, our time, and our energy on reveals the very state of our heart. So if your, your, our treasures is in God, our heart will be aligned to his purposes. So I ask you, what is, what is your heart aligned to? What does your life re reveal? What does your life reveal about the condition of your heart? I ask you to take an inventory of all the things that you do throughout the day, throughout the week, and, and see what outweighs, what, what, is God weighing the things of God heavier, or, or does it tip the scale, or is it balanced, or uh, you're doing more things that are earthly, trying to pursue wealth, trying to get ahead in your job, trying to get that promotion, trying to um, uh, get those things and, and, and uh, build up your 401k. It's okay to do that. But it should not take priority over the things of God. So um, is your heart focused on God or is it focused on worldly possessions? And then number three, point number three is the eyes um, as the lamp of your spirit. In verse uh, 6, 22 and 23, it actually says that the eyes of your spirit Allow the revelation light to enter into your being. And if your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. If it's unclouded, the light of God will flood into your spirit man, will flood into you. Um, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And then verse 22 says, but if your eyes are focused on money, focused on the things of this world, it says that the light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place it says how profound will darkness within you will the darkness within you if the light of truth cannot enter in so what he's saying here is is that our spiritual vision um, uh, when we are focused on earthly things, when we are focused on worldly things, it says, uh, it talks about our spiritual vision and, and spiritual blindness, spiritual blindness. Think about that. He says that light, good eyes. I, I, I had cataract surgery, um, a couple of months ago and, and, I can see. I don't need to wear glasses anymore because there was a cloud over my eyes that was preventing me from seeing clearly. And so therefore, the cataract surgery removed the hindrance that was hindering me from seeing clearly. So what are those things in your life that's hindering you from seeing and representing God the way that he says that you should represent him. A healthy or a good eye. Good eyes represent a heart and a life that's focused on God. That's focused on God. He lays it out for us. He says, eyes of your spirit allow the revelation light to enter into our being. Enter into our spirit. And it says, if your heart is unclouded. The light floods in. So in other words, there are some things that may be clouding our vision on a heavenly perspective, on a, and on a spiritual perspective. And so um, our healthy eyes are fixed on God. When our eyes are healthy, we are literally fixed on the things of God, fixed on pleasing God. Fixed on God and God, what would you have me to do? Fixed on staying in his will. Fixed on uh, um, seeking God and his righteousness. Seeking him in everything that we do. Everything. Every decision that we make. Every place that we go. Sometimes you say, well, I don't need to seek God for this. Well, yes, we do. That when we have uh, unclouded eyes, our spiritual eyes, we can begin to see the way that God sees. We begin to think the way that God thinks. But the contrast, in contrast to uh, uh, good eyes, is bad eyes. 
And the bad eyes, he says, darkness. Darkness is what he uh, uh, is, is describing as bad eyes. And bad eyes represent greed and envy and a focus on earthly wealth, which brings darkness and confusion. Darkness and confusion. There's, there's a confusion going on. It brings darkness. Uh, the eyes, um, it, it clouds our spiritual perception. It clouds our focus because our focus, our eyes are focused. It says focus on earthly wealth, greed, envy. We're envious of what someone else may do. And, and, and let me uh, just say this one thing. It's bad to compare yourself to someone else. God has uniquely created us. So we have to get rid of that spirit of comparison. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. We are uniquely made. I said on last Sunday that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. When we were in our mother's womb, he created us. He knew exactly how we were going to come out. He knew exactly how we were going to look as we got, uh, as we grew older. And so don't compare yourself to somebody else, uh, um, what somebody else is doing. Somebody else is anointed for a particular task. You may not be anointed for that, but God has anointed you for a specific task. And so when we begin to focus on other things, focus on other people, focus on earthly things and, and begin to envy and begin to compare ourselves to other things. Well, this person has that, or this person has this. I want this. I want that. Those are earthly things, which God says will rust, which will decay and which will go eventually will be here today and gone tomorrow and so he says that our eyes our eyes are a metaphor for spiritual perception and, and our body is your spirit you have a you have a spirit your holy spirit the holy spirit is within you and jesus is teaching about the good light let the light of God flood into you. But it says that when you begin to focus on earthly treasures, it says that uh, darkness begins to form and it clouds our vision and it even um, clouds us and it blinds us. I, I love what Jesus says. It says that uh, darkness cannot, uh, uh, when, when your eyes are focused on earthly things, he says that the light cannot come in. It cannot penetrate no matter how much it tries when the darkness is there. It cannot penetrate. It cannot penetrate. When we're focused on earthly things, our eyes, the light cannot penetrate that darkness because we are so focused on the earthly things, on earthly things. And so um, our perspective really should not be on becoming self-serving or becoming uh, so focused on our own interests and our goals that we lose sight of the things of God. We lose um, our desire to press into God. And I, I encourage you on today to press into God and to the things of God. And, and then I also ask you, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the things of the world? Are you uh, interested in the things of what someone else or, or trying to build yourself up uh, in the things of the world, the riches of the world? The more I, I, I get, the more I want. Do you have that kind of attitude? Or are you, and I'm saying the more I get, the more I want. I'm talking about towards earthly things. Or are you saying the more I get of God? The more I get of the revelation of God, the more that I want to hear his voice, the more that I want his presence to operate in my life. Or is your life clouded by materialism or self-interest? And then the last thing that I want to leave with you is worshiping two gods. We cannot worship God and worship the things of this world. Matthew 6 and 24 says, how could you worship two gods at the same time? You can't focus on two things at the same time. Try it. 
Try focusing on it. But then he goes on to say, you will have to hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other because you're focused. You're focused. You'll be devoted to whatever you focus on. You'll, dev- you'll be devoted to that. And then it says despise the other. And then the last question and the last thing that he says is you can't worship. You can't worship the true God while being enslaved to God or being enslaved to the God, small g, of money. It's not just talking about money. It's talking about materialist, material things. It's talking about being uh, materialistic. I got to have this. I got to have the latest iPhone. Y'all know that every time you turn around, there's a new phone that's coming out and there's new upgrades and I got to have it. I got to get this. I got to that. get that. Um, Jesus teaches us that it's impossible to serve both God and money. One's going to take priority over the other and the other is going to get neglected. So if you spend most of your time chasing after material things, chasing after earthly things, then that means that your time is going to, to time uh, uh, in serving God, time in worshiping God, time in spending in his word and in his presence, you're going to neglect that. You're going to neglect it. It's going to become neglected. What do you treasure most and what we treasure most will control us. What do you think about most? What do you talk about the most? What do you spend your money on the most? Those things that uh, the money, the things that we think about, the things that we do can literally dominate us, can literally dominate us. And, and our possessions can possess us. It can be so much. Uh, the possessions that we have can literally become so important to us. Uh, uh, I think about it. You can have um, uh, uh, money in the bank and continually get money. But the more you get, it's, it's not going to be enough. And it literally can become a focus to where I got to have more. I got to have more. I'm about uh, people paying off their debts. I'm about being, uh, uh, we here at Open Altar Worship Center are about people becoming debt free. We at Open Altar Ministries are, are uh, focused and, and talk about and teach people how to be good stewards over their money, their time, their resources. We at Open Altar Ministry teaches about tithing. Teaches about uh, tithing, giving 10% of your income, and some people even give over 10%. And so what are you loyal to? Are you greedy for the things of the world? Are, are you, um, are you uh, searching after the things of the world? And our loyalty must be to God alone. Must be to God alone. Our loyalty that means that uh, nobody else gets that space. Nobody else gets that, that place in my heart. God has, I'm loyal to, to my husband. I'm loyal to being married. And, and what are you loyal to? Are you loyal to uh, uh, the things of the world or are you loyal to God? What you think about, what you talk about, like I said before, it will literally dominate you and possess you. What do you spend your life pursuing? What goals, what other things um, that you have? Think about it. You are going to leave it behind. The material things of this world, you cannot take it with you. I'm a prime example. My mother was, was uh, we celebrated Christmas with her and two days later she was gone. She passed away suddenly. She couldn't take any of what she had, a house that she had built up from the ground up, a pool, three acres of land. She couldn't take any of that with her. It was left 
for us, her children, left for my father. She could not take any of that with her. So the things, the material things that we are accumulating, you can't take anything with us. And I, and I say, don't fall into the materialistic trap. We can fall into a trap of saying, I need this, I need that, or I want this. That's a trap that the enemy sets for us. He tries to get us caught up into material things. And he tries to trip us up and get us focused on the material, um, on the earthly things rather than heavenly things. He's, he, because he knows if we get the word of God in our heart, he knows that uh, if we spend time before God, that we, can, we will tune him out. When he comes to speak to us, the word of God, we can say, thus saith the Lord. Satan, I'm telling you right now, the word of God says this. You will not fall for Satan's lies. When you begin to get the word of God into your life, the enemy wants to trip you up. He wants to get you off focus. He wants to get you focused on the things of this world. So who are you really serving in your life? Are you serving God? Or are you serving the things of this world? Which one occupies you? Which one does earthly things occupy your thoughts, your time, and your efforts? Or is it God that occupies your time, that occupies your heart, that occupies your mind, the things that you think? I'm just asking a question. Think about what occupies. And I encourage you to, to write a list of the things that you do. Take, take one day. Just one day, just one day, and, and write down everything that you do in that day. And then after, at the end of the day, go back and look at what you've done during that day. And I also encourage you, when you're writing your list, write how much time you spend on whatever you do. And see which one or, or what list, out of your list, what things do you spend more time doing? What, out of your list, what time or how much time do you spend on doing that particular thing? And I, I would say that uh, most of your time, and I, I'm not saying most of us have to go, or some people have to go to work, some people have to do certain tasks, but the thing is, is that more of your time should be spent laying before the presence of God, seeking God, ask, asking you, what are you more loyal to? Where do you spend most of your time? And so as, as, I, as I close and as I, as I just have given you some things to think about, where's your focus? Where you focus on determines where your loyalty of your heart lies, as I said before. And we must align our heart to or align our heart with his kingdom and kingdom purposes, a kingdom mindset. We have to align ourselves. When a car is out of alignment, we have to go and get it adjusted. So in order for us to uh, bring ourselves into a heavenly mindset, in order to bring ourselves into alignment with God, we have to say, God, align me with your purposes. Align me. Bring me into alignment with what your will is for my life, what your direction is for my life. And, and we must align our heart not only to his kingdom, but we must trust him in his provisions. And rather than becoming enslaved to material things, God will provide every last one of your needs when you put him first. He will cause you to grow and cause doors to open up. But you have to put or we have to put him first in our life. Our heart has to be aligned with him. When our heart is aligned with him, then that means that he's going to cause doors to open up. He's going to cause wealth to come to you. He's going to cause unexpected riches 
to come to you, unexpected blessings to come to you when you align or when we align our heart with God and uh, we are to prioritize God's kingdom. Prioritize God. Make God a priority in your life. Don't let the things of this world, don't let materialism take priority over God. And, and if we see that we are prioritizing earthly things, if we see that we are, uh, are, are prioritizing the things of this world more than we're prioritizing uh, God and the things of God and his purposes, then we have to get rid of those things. Sometimes you have to go through your house and get rid of some things. And so I say, go get into your, your, yourself and, and say, you know what, Lord, what in my life do I need to get rid of? Ask him, what do I need to get rid of? What has become an idol to me? An idol is anything that you worship more than God. An idol is anything that you spend more time doing than spending time with God. An idol is anything that you put before God. And so we have to get rid of those idols. And, and idols can be a habit. Idols can be a person. Idols can be a thing. It can be so many other things. And so I say we have to take an inventory of our life and say, Lord, what am I focus on, focusing on the most? What has more of my time? What's taking more of my time? What am I focused on? Am I focused on building my business? Am I focused on, even in the church setting, am I focused on focusing on having more people, having the, the building full of people? Yes, we want. We want our churches. We want people to come to church. We want people to experience the presence of God. But are we focused so much on that Focused on that, that we lose sight of those that just want to be sown into. And are we losing our focus and, and, and building bigger things rather than just handling and doing exactly and ministering and, and, and doing those things that God wants for us to do? And so on today, I just wanted to give you that, that, that uh, the little tidbit regarding what do you value most focusing on God what what's your heart's condition you know uh, are you building up heavenly treasures treasures that won't rust that won't de be de won't decay are you building up treasures that cannot be taken heavenly treasures that cannot be taken away from you nobody can come and get it uh, um, what's how's your vision is your vision uh, uh, spiritually or is it earthly? Is it materialistically? What, how is your spiritual vision? You know, do you have good eyesight? You know, it, 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 uh, are you blinded spiritually? You know, is there darkness because you're so focused on something else? And, and then, you know, are you trying to worship two gods? We can't do that. And so God says, there's only one God to worship. And it's him. We have to focus on him and focus on giving him all of our time, all of our energy, all of our efforts. And he will then impart into us what's needed to carry things out through the day. He will open doors, as I said. He will bless us beyond measures. So I say on today... What are you focusing on? It's a treasure hunt. And what we want to do is we want to store up heavenly riches versus earthly riches. I want to pray with you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for um, this word that you have allowed for me to speak to your people on today. I ask, Father, that you um, help us to take an inventory of our life and look at those things that uh, may have become idols to us without us even knowing it. Let us look at those things that we spend more time doing. 
Help us to take an inventory. And, and then, Father, I pray that you give us the strength to get rid of those things. And then give us a heart and a mindset to be focused on you. To be uh, so focused on your word and, and knowing what your word says and doing what you tell us to do and doing what you download into our spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, we say we open ourselves up to you to lead and to guide us into the direction of what the Father, of where the Father wants for us to go. And so we praise you and we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, because you opened up the way so that we would be able to have access to the things of God, access to our Heavenly Father. And then, Holy Spirit, you're right here with us, here to help us. And so on today, you're here to help us to get ourselves back into alignment with God. You're here with us today to help us to focus on God, to change our focus and not treasure the things of the world, but to treasure the things of our Heavenly Father. You're here to help us to put God first in our life. And when we put him first, we know that, Father, you will open up every door that has been shut. You will you will pour down and rain down on us blessings that we will not even have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, I pray. Look, we will see you next Sunday at 9 o'clock. Thank you. We pray God's blessings on you today, not only today, but throughout the rest of this week. Amen.